up everyone and welcome to my channel. My name's Tony Marie Hudson and I'm a pet portrait artist and I'm back today with a portrait that I did a few months ago. It were commissioned as a gift for the owner of this dog who's sadly passed away. The dog was a border collie and her name was Megan and she was a, a tri-blue male. For some returning viewers you'll probably recognise this portrait from a, a recent tongue tutorial that I did. I thought I'd just post the full time lapse as well for you. If you've not been before and you want to see that tongue tutorial, I'll link to it above as well so you can go and check that out if you want to see how I did this tongue in a bit more detail. So I'm using my usual acrylics on this one on Fabriano Artist Eco Hot Press at £300. The acrylics are mostly Windsor & Newton Professional and also some Liquitex and what have you. I do use some Windsor & Newton Flow Improver to make it a little bit easier to work with acrylics. I am looking into trying some other mediums as well so if anybody's got any suggestions on good mediums for keeping paint wet a bit longer for when I want to do like backgrounds and things like that and you can just work it a little bit more like you can with oils then just let me know in comments if you know a good uh, medium to get that kind of result with. I did gesso this paper and I've gessoed the last few paintings but to be honest I'm not all that convinced that I like it to be honest and I've gone back to just painting straight on paper without gesso in it again which I've been doing for a long time and I've still got paintings that I did from 10, 15, 20 years ago and they're still fine so I have considered trying panels and things like that I'm not a big fan of canvas so I can't see myself going down that path but yeah I have considered maybe trying panels or something like that as well to paint on but just sticking to my usual paper for now, this Fabriano does hold up really well with acrylic, so... The reference photo that I used for this were taken when it was snowing so it had got like a lot of wintry kind of light in it and there was some sunshine coming from one side but there were a lot of reflections from snow and things like that. Dog were also covered in a lot of powdery snow all over her face and the client asked me to just leave that off. But we decided to stick with wintry theme with the cool coloured background and what have you. And because the collie was standing in a typical stalking collie pose, so she'd got her head quite low, she weren't sitting with her head up high, she were in a stalking pose, so the, the shoulders came up above her head and you couldn't really see her chest because it was behind her head. I decided to add a little bit of just fading out the legs and what have you, which you'll see a little bit later on because trying to add more chest in were just, it weren't really going to work very well because she could see too much of the air behind her ears because of the position that she were in. So you couldn't then just add more chest as well because that would just make her look weird like an hunchback of Notre Dame or something. <laughs> and I had to explain this to a client because they did ask about a bit more chest. I said instead I'll just add a little bit more body um, like how it shows in reference photo where you can see her legs and things like that and just fade them out a little bit so you'll see all that come up near end of video when I come to close to finishing painting off because it were one of the last things that I did One of the reasons we decided to stick to a wintry theme was because of the reflections and things like that 
that were going on on dog anyway, especially on the tongue, nose and eyes, but also on the side of the face away from the sun, which is on the actual left hand side coming to coming towards the right you'll see there's a lot of blue tones on that side as well now I didn't reference photo that were caused by the fact that the dog were in a snowy scene so this is one reason why we kept the wintry theme because it just fitted better with the colours and tones that were going on with dog as well anyway I don't think it would have looked so good on a warm coloured background like a beige or a cream or something like that <laughs> definitely looks better with a, a cool background. Being a male this dog also had a few blue patches in her eyes. They, they often have like a, a marbling effect caused by the, the male coloration. Not all males have it but it is quite common in males to have part of the iris where it's brown or like a goldy colour and part of it where it's blue. So it's, it's not all blue or all brown so to speak. It can be like different colours and this dog had some of these blue patches in her eyes so that made it even more interesting to paint along with all them interesting snow reflections and what have you. In more usual type of light you'd get a reflection of mostly from sky and things like that but when you've got a snowy scene you get a lot of reflections from actual ground as well because snow's so bright Normally you won't really see much in way of reflections on lower part of eyeball but in a snowy scene you do get a lot more reflections from the ground as well so it can be a lot more complex the reflections going on in eyes when you've got a dog that's in that kind of a setting. So you can see now I've added some body in and I don't want to get too detailed on this because the idea is that it were going to fade out into that background colour as if the dog were like emerging out of kind of like a, a misty snowy kind of scene so to speak. That's the effect that I sort of wanted. I'm also just adding the final highlights to the actual dog's face such as the, the male coloration you know on the top of her head and things like that which gives it a little bit more punch. You might have noticed how dark it started out looking you know earlier on in video it looked really dark and now it looks a lot lighter because I've had a chance to paint in all them grey hairs in that male coloration and, and what have you. And then the last job we're just coming in with airbrush and going over the area where I painted some body in just to fade it out and the airbrush just made it a lot easier to get that effect and I think I'm coming to end of this now so I'll do a final reveal and show you the finished paintings and a couple of close-ups so if you enjoyed this video then consider giving it a like and maybe subscribe as well if you've not already because there will be more content coming up I've got some non-collies coming up and some tutorials so keep an eye out for them and this is going to be it for now, so I'll see you in my next video. Bye!